Today we're going to lecture a little bit about modulus of elasticity. Already in chapter 8 we've talked about what stress in a material is and we've also talked about what strain in a material is. Um, today what we're going to talk about is the material property that relates stress to strain in a given material. And that material property is called modulus of elasticity. So as a material property, each material has its own modulus of elasticity. Uh, steel is probably uh, a material which, out of all the materials that you'll probably be familiar with, has the highest modulus of elasticity. It's approximately 30 million PSI. Some people say 29 million PSI. Uh, but, for example, a uh, material like concrete only has a uh, modulus of roughly about 3 million PSI. And this is important because this is the relationship of a material's stress to strain. Okay, so the modulus of elasticity is simply the stress divided by the strain of a material. Now, the typical place that we uh, consider a material's modulus of elasticity is in the elastic region. And again, uh, last week we saw a tension test being run, and the modulus of elasticity typically for a material is taken in the elastic region, which is in the straight line portion uh, of the graph that you get, the stress-strain graph that comes out of the uh, tension test. Uh, it, it happens in the elastic region. Um, you can take modulus of elasticities other places, but again, in the elastic region is typically the one uh, that we are most concerned about because that's, that's when a material is behaving elastically. This relationship of stress to strain, or the knowledge of a material's stress to strain relationship is very important in predicting how much a material will deform under a certain load or how much stress will cause a certain amount of axial deformation. So it's, it's fairly important for us. Um, the formula for modulus of elasticity is simply, like we said, stress over strain. Again, we have been talking about direct axial stress, uh, so you know the stress there is sigma, the strain is simply uh, change in length over original length. Uh, the modulus of the elasticity is going to uh, have units of stress. Uh, strain is a uh, sort of uh, neutral um, unit as far as uh, as we're concerned, I mean, strain has values of inches per inch or millimeters per millimeter. So unit-wise, uh, strain is sort of neutral. Uh, and therefore, since modulus is stress divided by strain, um, modulus is going to take on units of stress. So again, you'll see in U.S. units, you'll see modulus have units of PSI or KSI. Uh, when you get into metric units, SI units, you'll see um, modulus of elasticity take on units of pascals or kilopascals or so on and so forth. Um, like we said, modulus is very important in terms of uh, giving us the ability to predict uh, items. The most common uh, rearrangement of the modulus formula has it becoming rearranged so that we actually solve for the deformation. And that's what's shown here on this slide in sort of the last equation. The axial deformation in a uh, particular object is PL divided by AE. P being the force, the axial force, this can be a tension force or this could be a compression force, but the axial force in a member. L is the original length of a member divided by A. A is the cross-sectional area. And E, as we've been talking about, is the modulus of elasticity. So again, um, knowing the material that we have, and like I said, 
the, the typical known materials, steel, aluminum, copper, concrete, brass, they all have known values of modules of elasticity. So if I know the load, if I know the area, if I know the original length, I can go ahead and I can predict deformation. So that's, that's pretty powerful rearrangement. I should say that you can rearrange this formula however else you would like. Here's a little example. Steel bar, cross section of one by one, so it's a one inch square cross section, it has 10,000 pounds applied to it. If the bar is 50 inches long, how much does it stretch out? Steel, again, a lot of people say steel is either 30 million PSI or 29 million PSI, somewhere in that range. Uh, if I was doing this in KSI, it would be 30,000 KSI. So how would I do this? Well, we talked about that rearranged formula where you could solve for deformation caused by an axial force. So here, deformation, my force is 10,000 pounds. My length is 50 inches. That's a one square inch cross section. And the E for steel, I'm saying, we are going to take is 30 million PSI. Calculate this out, and the deformation of this steel bar comes out to be 0 0.0167 inches. Let's do another problem. This modulus of elasticity um, for an aluminum bar is going to be about 10 million PSI. Again, you know, some people might say 10.4 million PSI, but we're saying 10 million. Anyway, our aluminum bar is uh, one inch uh, diameter, uh, and it's 100 inches long. How much stress does it have to have on it to stretch out 0.15 uh, inches? Um, in this case, uh, what you'll do there is just rearrange the formula to uh, solve for, in our case, stress. Okay, um, so I solve for P over A. The deformation gets multiplied by E and divided by L. All right, so I go through here and put in the plug in the numbers for deformation E and length, and I come out with a value of 15,000 PSI. All right. Here's just another little modulus uh, sort of calculation for you. Uh, stress over strain, we already know that is. What is the stress? If I got a bar with 10,000 PSI on it and uh, it's got a two inch radius, okay, when I press down on this bar, uh, it's going to deform 0.2415 inches. Okay? Um, so it goes from 8 inches long to a little over 7 and 3 quarter inches long. All right? So what's the stress? Well, the stress is 10,000 pounds. The area, since it was originally uh, a 2 inch, uh, di uh, two inch diameter, Okay, I'm going to say, you know, or excuse me, two inch radius, sorry about that, um, would be pi r squared. Okay, so 10,000 pounds divided by pi r squared, that's a little over 12 and a half square inches. This stress comes out to be 796 psi. What's the strain? Again, the strain in the axial direction. We know strain is change of length divided by original length. My change of length here is 0.2415 inches. My original length is 8 inches. So if I say 0.2415 divided by 8, I'll come out with a little over 0 0.03 inches per inch. What would my modulus be then? Well, modulus is stress, about 796 psi, divided by strain, a little bit over 0 0.03 inches per inch, so it comes out to be just a shade under 26,400 PSI. Last week we did a tension test, and the video is posted up on Blackboard. Uh, but anyway, here's what we're talking about. Here's a tension test. Um, 
that, that has been done and a portion of the stress strain diagram. The modulus of elasticity that we, we normally see uh, listed in books and whatnot occurs in the elastic region. And that's that initial straight line region of the graph. How can I calculate modulus of elasticity in a test? Well, modulus of elasticity is stress over strain. The stress is on the vertical axis, the strain is on the horizontal axis. So again, the slope of this line here, I could simply, to calculate that slope, I could simply take two points on that straight line. I could then figure out the difference in stress values divided by the difference in strain values. Okay. Slope is the change of y over the change of x, and in this case, slope would be equivalent to the modulus of elasticity.